I am Kodish Pagla, your biology teacher of Better Vision High School. Today, I am going to discuss about chapter 2, the cell, the fundamental unit of life. Already we know about the cell, the standard cell. We know that cell is termed as a basic unit of life because all the living organisms made by one or more cells. Even we know that cell is known as the structural and functional unit of life because behind the structure of every living organism we can sound the cell and the cell function is going to be the organism's function. Now we are in the standard mind. So we have to discuss it in a details. We know that if we are trying to provide the unit on the basis of the characteristic of living organism, it is quite difficult to provide that unit. But when we are trying to find the similarities between the living organism on the basis of the structure, we can found that behind the every living organism, there are present some smallest chamber that is known as a cell and but how the scientists discover it we know that about the Aristotle the father of biology Aristotle was the first scientist who provided the segmentation theory about the structure of living organism the segmentation theory Segmentation theory. Segmentation theory. Behind the structure of a living organism, there are present some segments. Suppose these are the living organism. Now this living organism are formed by the some segment. And this segment are repeated to form the whole structure. This theory are provided by the Aristotle. Now, after that, the Galileo. Galileo was the first scientist to observe the compound eye of insect. Compound eye of insect. Behind the structure of a compound eye, Galileo found a similar type of segment, and these segments are limited to form the whole part. Even the Galileo supports the segmentation theory. But in the year of 1590, two brothers called as the Ed Jensen and Jed Jensen were the first to invent the microscope. Microscope. It are invented by the F. Jensen and J. Jensen. After the invention of microscope, the golden era relating to the cell biology of cytology start. In the year of 1665, Robert Hill discovered the cell. Generally, he cut the thin slice of a cord and observed it under his own microscope. And behind and the microscopic field, he observed some hexagonal structure. Some hexagonal structure. And this hexagonal structure are commonly termed as smallest chamber. Smallest chamber or cell. So Robert was the first scientist who is involved in being or coined the term cell. In the year of 1675, A.V. Lienhoek, A.V. Lienhoek discovered the living cell. A.V. Lienhoek was the 
that's microbiologist generally we store some rain water and observe this rain water by drop and drop by using his microscope and found that some elements are moving from one portion to the another portion of the slime that's why by this way he discovered the living cell even he was the first scientist that he observed the sperm cell of the cattle's cat even the blood cell of the human beings later on in the year of 1838-39 30? no two German scientists Selden and Schwann published the scientific theory about the cell that known as a cell theory cell theory now we are going to explain the cell theory the first point within the cell theory was the cell is the basic unit of life because every living organism is formed by the cell the second point is cell is the structural and functional unit of life cell is the structural first one structural and functional unit of life the organism contains a single cell they are termed as a unicellular organism they are the structure of a unicellular organism they are present a single cell but if the organism contains good amount of cell they are termed as a multicellular organism so behind the structure of a multicellular organism we can found the, the smallest unit or the basic unit that is known as a cell some cells are combined they are from the tissue 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 are combined to form the organ organ are combined to form the to form the system and system develops our body so we have the structure of the muscular organism there is the present the cell so the cell term is a structural unit and the functional unit every at each part function of the organism are performed by the cell that's why the cell term is a structural and functional unit of life the third point the new cell is arise from the pre-existing cell so this point gives the idea about the cell division so one mature cell or the parent cell are going to be divided and creating the new cell these are the third point and in the fourth point every and each cell are able to perform the all necessary function these are the cell theory but virus does not are discussed by the cell theory we cannot the exceptional of the cell theory is the virus so the uses of the cell theory are strong later on the Dmitry Ivanovsky and started a new branch of the biology that is known as a virology I will discuss about the structure of virus generally the outer covering of a virus is termed as a capsid and within the capsid there is no cellular components only the genetic materials are present that's why it is termed as a non-cellular element later on the scientist Dujadin was the first who observed the inner portion of the cell and he found that within the inner portion of the cell present some fluid like substance and he coined the term sarco so Dujadin was the first scientist to observe the inner portion of the cell and coined the term sarco later on the scientist Parkenji 
चेंज द टर्म सालो इन टू द प्रोटोप्लाजम एंड विद इन द प्रोटोप्लाजम द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोटोप्लाजम आज इन्वेंटेड बाय द रॉबर्ट ब्राउन दैट इज द न्यूक्लियस जनरली न्यूक्लियस इज नोन एज द ब्रेन ऑफ द सेल ब्रेन ऑफ द सेल व्हिच इज डिस्कवर्ड बाय द robot block this is the discovery of the cell now we are going to discuss about the types of the cell first cellular organism the organism the organism formed by the cell they are called as the cellular organism on the basis of the cell number the cellular organism are two types unicellular and multicellular unicellular and multicellular unit is single if the organism contain the single cell or the one cell this are called as a unicellular organism for example is the amoeba paramecium all the protozoans are the unicellular multi means few if the organism contain huge number of cell they are called as a multicellular organism even the cell are going to be classified on the basis of nucleus number on the basis of nucleus number it may be the unicellular or multicellular unicellular means the single nucleus containing cell for example our body cell contain only one nucleus that's why our body cell are unicellular in nature whereas our muscle cell contain two to five nucleus within the cell that's why it is a multicellular cell but the most important categories are given by the hendrix on the basis of nuclear structure and membrane bounded cell organelles on the basis of nuclear structure and the membrane bounded cell organelles and these categories the cell into two types prokaryotic and eukaryotic generally what way to develop cell or the one way to develop nucleus had in the four parts you know that in standard a we already discussed this the outer membrane of the nucleus are termed as a nuclear membrane the fluid substance present within the nucleus that termed as a nucleoplasm the fibers the bed structure present the termed as a nucleophile or chromatin fiber and one small membranous organelles present which are formed by the ligament protein they are termed as a nucleoplast these are the structure of a way developed nucleus and membrane bounded organelles means the organelles contain its own outer covering that termed as a membrane bounded organelles the hand is classifying the cell on the basis of nuclear structure and the outer membrane containing organelles to the two types prokaryotic and eukaryotic prokaryotic cell pro means in and karyotic comes from the karyotic means the nucleus if the nucleus is fully developed or the nucleus without the nuclear membrane and nucleolus and the outer membrane bounded cell organelles are absent this type of cell are termed as a prokaryotic cell so in case of the prokaryotic cell nucleus does not contain the nuclear membrane and nucleolus 
this type of nucleus are termed as a nucleate. Even this type of cell does not contain the outer membrane bounded cell organelles. In case of the eukaryotic cell, nucleus is well developed, having four parts: nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, nucleophile, and nucleolus. Even outer membrane bounded cell organelles like mitochondria, Golgi body, all are the present. And do we know that small cell organelles which does not contain any outer membrane, which help in the protein synthesis, they are termed as a ribosome. Both cell, the prokaryotic, it may be the prokaryotic or the eukaryotic, contain the ribosome, but their size are quite variable. In case of the prokaryotic cell, the ribosome will be the 70 s. Ribosome will be the 70 s. And in case of the eukaryotic cell, the ribosome will be the 80 s. Here the s stands for the Sedgwar unit. Now, tomorrow we will discuss about